So law of definite composition states that the uh, compounds always contain the same elements in a constant proportion by mass. So if you look at water, doesn't matter where you got the water from. Pure water, whether it's from the King's River or from the ocean, you purified all the salt and stuff out of it, from the Nile River in Egypt, doesn't matter. It's always going to have the same composition. It'll be 11.19% hydrogen, 88.81% oxygen by mass. That's what the law of constant composition or definite composition says. Ethanol, always these percentages of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So compounds always have the same composition by mass. We use chemical formulas as um, a shorthand in chemistry. Um, and there, there are a fair number of terms you have to learn as a beginning chemistry student. One of those terms is molecule. A molecule is composed of two or more nonmetal atoms. And here's an illustration of a molecule of sulfuric acid. And we're representing the atoms of different elements with different colors. And so this one has one, two, three, four of these little red spheres, and one yellow sphere, and two white spheres. So there are two hydrogen atoms, four um, oxygen atoms, the red ones, and one sulfur atom, and they are all stuck together. So I think of atoms as being a lot like Lego blocks, okay? The individual Lego blocks are atoms. When you make a little structure out of the atoms, you've made a molecule. They're stuck together and they're in a particular arrangement. They are stuck together really well, so maybe you, you know, used super glue to stick them together. So they're really stuck together. So that's a molecule, two or more nonmetal atoms. And we abbreviate that with a chemical formula. So we list the element symbols of each of the elements that are present, and after the symbol, we list the number of those atoms as a subscript. So H2 means two hydrogens. S, there's no subscript. Uh, chemists seem to have a thing against the number one. We don't write the number one unless we absolutely have to. It's really just being efficient. Because if there wasn't one sulfur, we wouldn't write S. So it's kind of redundant to write the, uh, the one. So we just write S, and that means there's one of them. If there's more than one, we say how many. And then we've got the O4. <coughs> so the, the formula here, and we would read this, just read the letters and the numbers, H2SO4. That's, that's the abbreviation for sulfuric acid. So when we write these formulas, um, here's the list of instructions. Number of each type of atom is indicated with a subscript. Size matters here. A subscript is a smaller number, and it needs to be sunken down. Just like a submarine goes under the ocean, a subscript is below. Superman flies over the city, a superscript is above. Okay? Superscripts and subscripts mean different things, and sometimes details matter. If you're sending an important email to your boss and you get one letter wrong in the email address, does it go through? No, and then you're screwed, right? So details matter. <coughs> so if we only have one atom, we don't write the number one. So just an example. The vitamin niacin is a chemical. It has six carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, two nitrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. So what's the formula for it? C6H6N2O. Yeah, so we, we're, we've got carbon. Carbon is C, and there's six of them. So we've got a, lower, a little subscript here, C6, and then H, capital letter, 6, nitrogen, capital N, 2, and one oxygen, capital O. Any questions? Sometimes we use parentheses to clarify atomic composition. Uh, this is ethylene glycol. That's the uh, active component of antifreeze. So its formula looks like this. 
And here's a, a picture of what the molecule might look at, look like. So here we've got this OH in parentheses, and there's a 2 on the outside. Uh, chemists do this for a number of reasons. Uh, you don't have to understand the reason. You just have to know what it means when we do this. Um, but I think of this like buying something at Costco. You know, if you want to buy ketchup, you have to buy two bottles, right? Because they're shrink wrapped together. They only come in twos. What's up with that, right? Why are they doing that? Well, we don't have to know, but we know that they do that. And so this is like something at Costco that's a bundle pack. The O and the H are going together always. And on the outside of the parentheses tells us how many packages there are. The parentheses are like the shrink wrap, okay? So when we look at this, we've got two carbons, four hydrogens there, and in here, we've got two of everything inside the shrink wrap. So we've got two oxygens and two hydrogens. Any questions?